Buddhist tradition says uh, mm. values uh, compassion mm. over attachment. Can you ex just explain the difference between love and compassion and attachment, how different love is from attachment? Mm. Uh, love, affection, two levels. One, more or less biological factor. Mm. But that's very much uh, mixed with attachment. So that biased uh, love uh, essentially uh, very much sort of mixed with attachment. That very much oriented about others' attitude. So that kind of love uh, only towards your friend. That kind of biased love cannot extend towards your enemy. So instead of love, hatred, anger come. Now that biased love, uh, due to biological factor, that take as a seed, then use our intelligence. Uh, we are a social animal. Now today, seven billion human beings uh, is basis of our future. So, uh, thinking the, the rest of the humanity is the basis of my own future interest. And then, more than that, according to your own experience, seven billion human beings all want a happy life and have a right to achieve happy life. So I always tell him, mentally, emotionally, physically, seven billion human beings, same. Everyone have a right as much as you have right. right? So therefore, then think that way, on that level. So on the basis of uh, sense of oneness of seven billion human beings, uh, then you can develop, you can develop sense of concern of the well-being of seven billion human beings. Then including your enemy. So uh, from that, that kind of sort of attitude or understanding, then uh, your sort of sense of concern or affection that now the Kasoda secondary level, right? Another level of affection, compassion, without attachment. That we can do. Irrespective of whether uh, religious people or non religious people, doesn't matter. Even animal. How have you have that sort of potential, even an animal have. Hmm? How should we do that then, Your Holiness? What's, how should we extend compassion towards someone who means to do us harm? Yes, as far as their action is concerned, their attitude is concerned, negative, so you may take, if necessary, appropriate countermeasure to, in order to stop, but without anger. But as a person, you see, because uh, they also have that person also have every right to be a happy person. So while you are taking appropriate countermeasure, you can keep serious, compassionate attitude towards that person. That can do. Of course, these are not automatically come from where. They are like as an uh, automatic mission. <laughs> you need effort. <laughs> Even physical, because the music sports are there. Uh, sports. Um, even in athletics. Uh, you need uh, so training and take time. So similarly, training our mind also take time and need effort. Otherwise, you see, we can, we can develop these things. I always, I think, 
mentioning one sort of story. One my friend, one monk. Uh, now his age now uh, 90, uh, uh, 95 years old. He spent 18 years in Chinese communist gulag after 59. Uh, so then, uh, early 80, uh, like some other Tibetan, he also had the opportunity to uh, visit us, uh, come to India. Then, uh, I have sort of casual talk as an old friend. So then, he told me, during 18 years, this is some occasion, he really faced some danger. Then I thought, maybe danger on his life. And I asked, what kind of danger? Then he uh, told me, danger of losing compassion towards perpetrators. No, perpetrators. Perpetrators. So people who trained the, some practice of compassion, that kind of attitude. It is extremely important to keep compassion towards the pro per person who creates problem for you. So he consider losing that is really serious danger. Like that. Of course, I have the bigger name Dalai Lama. He just ordinary monk. As <laughs> as far as the practice is concerned, I think his practice most. I think. Uh, the more advanced than me, I think. <laughs> if I have that kind of situation, I don't know. What kind of reaction come? I don't know, really. 